Okay, number four is kind of the same thing. One of them is the sine of dy dx is the sine of x cubed, and the other is dy dx equals the sine of y cubed. So which slope field goes, which slope fields, which slope field shows slopes that depend upon x but not on y? Think it's A? Okay, which which equation depends upon x but not on y? Which equation? The first one. Okay, so the equation would be the sine of x cubed. All right, where would the slopes of sine of x cubed equal zero? Where at, where what is zero? Where x is zero. So your slopes equal zero everywhere that x equals zero. So x equals zero, is that going to be along a vertical line or along a horizontal line? It's going to be along a vertical line. Okay, so everywhere that the slopes equal zero, where x is zero would be part would be graph B. So graph B shows slopes that depend upon x but not on y. Anytime your slope or your differential equation just has x's in it, you're going to have vertical stripes of your slopes because the slope is only dependent upon the x value, not the y value of every single point. Okay, so you might want to put vertical stripes here. Do y'all know what I, do y'all understand what I'm talking about with vertical stripes? Yeah, like this, like this vertical line right here all has the exact same slope. And if I move along to this vertical line right here, it all has this exact same slope. So which slope field shows slopes that depend upon y but not on x? Obviously, it's got to be graph A. But if dy dx equals the sine of y cubed, then the slopes will equal 0 when y equals 0. So, and you can see from graph A that when y is zero, you've got horizontal slopes right there. So you're going to have horizontal stripes. So which slope field goes with which equation? The sine x cubed was b, and the sine y cubed was a. Basically, you're not going to be drawing too many slope fields on your own. You're going to be matching a lot of slope fields. So I'm trying to give you tools for quickly matching slope fields, like figuring out where the slopes would be zero, or figuring out if you should have horizontal stripes or vertical stripes, et cetera. All right, so that brings up number five, which we're going to blow through because you're so good at this now. And we're going to match the differential equation with the slope field. Now, unfortunately, all of these have both x's and y's. If some of them just had x's, then you could look in the equation, then you could look for slope fields that had vertical stripes if some of them just had y's, etc. All right, personally, I start to look for where the slopes are 0 or undefined or maybe where the slopes are 1. So for dy dx equals y over x, where will I have a 0 slope? Okay, when y is 0, I'm going to have a 0 slope. What's going to happen when x is 0? Good, I'm going to have an undefined slope. Now, a and c are very similar to each other in that they're both y over x, but one is positive and one is negative. So 0 slopes at y equals 0 and undefined slopes at x equals 0 would have to be Let's see, I should have labeled these. We're going to label them Roman numerals 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, which two have zero slopes at y equals 0 and undefined slopes at x equals 0? 2 and 3. Right. 
The undefined slopes are not always shown, but you can see that you're getting steeper and steeper and steeper, and then it flips over to like a, like a steeper negative slope, and then it flips over to a positive slope. Okay, in the first quadrant, so A is either going to be two or three. In the first quadrant on A, should your slopes be positive or negative? Positive. So which one is A? It has to be two. And because C is negative y over x, then in the first quadrant your slopes are going to be negative. So that's three. And then B and D are kind of flip-flopped. You're going to have zero slopes when x is zero and undefined slopes when y is zero. But in the first quadrant on B, you should have positive slopes. And in the first quadrant on D, you should have negative slopes.